Okay, Ross, so uh, we're here with you at UFC Melbourne. A difficult sort of time for you. You sort of took a bit of a gamble. You fought a bunch of times this year and it didn't really go your way most of the time. Talk to us, where are you at right now after a recent loss over there at UFC Belfast? And what's going through your mind? Does it feel like it, it paid off to you fighting that often or does it feel like it might have sort of taken away a little bit? Um, uh, right now, obviously, I'm still bummed um, with a fight only being a few days ago. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm lost. Um, I don't know how to change it. You know, guys who's fighting us aren't fighting us. The the they're coming into these fights, and everyone knows the way to beat me is not to fight us. You know, is to to pick points, run, pick a shot, move. You know, just spoil the fight, and it's uh, it's frustrating. You know, um, I'm not seeing. I want to fight every fight where just two guys is going to go in there and slug it out and brawl out and strike, you know? I want to fight the best guys who are going to come and fight, whether that be the best guy who's wrestling, whether the best grapplers out there. I want to fight guys who want to come and fight. Um, I signed up to this sport to test myself against the best. Um, I didn't sign up for this sport so people could just squeak by on a win do you know what I mean if if you go back to that last fight and you break it all down I think I had octagon control I think I landed the cleaner shots I think from what you can take of that fight you know I think you know it was like yeah it was nothing fight nothing really happened it wasn't even a fight it was uh, I'm not even marked up I don't even feel like I've had a fight it was just a frustrating style what I've had all year with guys fighting us. Um, everyone knows that um, my striking, my power, my speed, um, all of that goes out the window when guys don't come at us, guys don't attack us, guys don't fight us. And I'm kind of left just chasing a fight what's not even there. And it's it's frustrating for me, it's frustrating for the fans. And it just, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I can do. I, I can't really change too much of my style because I'm like, I'm not the tallest fighter. I haven't got the best range. I've got to use forward pressure from guys. I've got to use guys coming to fight for me to fight better. Do you know what I mean? I can't push a fight because I don't have range. I don't have height. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's just it's a it's a tricky one. What what we got to figure out to do. It sounds like you're dealing with a lot of things and afterwards you, you sort of spoke about how you can't keep coming in here and, and losing these close decisions and you have to go back and speak to your family. Obviously the fight's very fresh, but when you say that, what do you mean? Because it kind of sounds like you're almost hinting at retirement. Where, where do you sort of go from here? What, what is the, the that you sort of need to think about and figure out? Yeah, I mean, one thing's for sure, I'll put this out here, that is, I'm not retiring, nowhere. I'm still too young, still too fresh. I've had five fights this year and I haven't been hitting any of them, do you know what I mean? It's I haven't even had a fight really. What I meant was, I gotta go back and look at what I'm doing wrong. Um, I don't feel, when I'm in the fight, I don't feel that I'm doing a lot wrong. I feel like I'm doing what I can, what's been given to us. Um, stylistically, the matchups, what, what I've been given, every fight that I've had this year, I know I've taken on, on short notice or I've had a switch of opponent, which it doesn't really mean anything really, but guys uh, are coming in to fight me, like taking the easy way out. They're not coming out to test themselves. They're not coming out to push themselves and, and, and feel like, you know what, I dominated that guy, I took him out, I beat him, I won, I was the better fight that night. They're looking to, to squeak out a decision, which is, it's a it's it's a it's a pussy's way out, and I'm gonna see it. It's it's a pussy's way out of doing it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm in this I'm in this sport for the realness of of fighting, you know, and and that's getting taken away before the fights even happen because they're coming in with that stylistic game plan. I can fully take a fighter who's got a game plan as to fight on the back foot to counter punch to not come forward, but at least try to take us out, at least try to land something. Like nothing was being landed the whole time, and I'm, I'm just stood there like defending shots, make, make, make miss shots, and, and I want the fight to go. I'm looking for my wrestling, I'm looking for my strikes, I'm looking for everything, but when the space and, and, and guys are just moving backwards, there's nothing there. There's not actually a fight happening. 
Uh, obviously, you, you've spoken about some of the difficulties with opponents and, and, and the way they're sort of coming at you. I, I understand if you don't really feel like playing matchmaker, but around UFC 200 International Fight Week, you said that you want to fight, you know, the Cowboy Cerrone's of the world. That, that's a guy that comes in and brings it. Is there anyone, maybe not him, but anyone else that you've had your eye on and thought, you know what, that's a good matchup. That's a guy that will scrap, that will fight, that I, I would like to fight. Is there anyone that you, you would sort of not necessarily like to call out, but, you know, would like to fight? Yeah, I mean, Diego Sanchez always is a rematch. He's the type of fighter that comes and fights. He doesn't take a backward step. He comes and fights. And you got and you got to take everyone takes the hat off the Diego Sanchez because every time, doesn't matter who you are, what style you are, he comes and has it. He implements his game plan to take you out, to fight you. He's a little bit silly sometimes. He tries to fight guys at their best when he's not that good in that area. But he comes out and tries to take you out. He's old school. He's he's what this sport started off like. The, you look back at his whole career and each time you the guy's a warrior you know what I mean the guy comes and has it and, and that's what I want you know what I mean that's what I'm here for I'm not here for the for the the poor decisions the oh you should have won that fight the judges robbed judge you know what I mean I don't care about the judges I don't it annoys us, it pisses us off, but I want guys who come and fight. And and Diego is one of them guys. Joe Lozan's another one of them guys. Jim Miller's another one of them guys. Tiago Alves is another one of them guys. Eddie Alvarez is one of them guys, although he didn't show it in his last fight. These are the names of the guys that come and fight and just bring it. And if I have if I fight all them guys next year and I have all them losses and, and them these guy beat us, but they beat us the right way where they took me out they've come and fought us and they were the better guys on that night I can be satisfied with myself I can be satisfied you know what I went out on the top I fought the best guys I went in I had it I got beat by the guy, better man but I'd be satisfied because I brought it they brought it whatever do you know what I mean what I can't be satisfied with is not fight, losing a fight where none of us were fighting and I'm just chasing chasing it you know what I mean so it's uh it's a little bit frustrating right now. Cool. Thank you very much, Ross. Looking cool. forward to see what happens in the Cheers. future. Thank you.